In this video, we're going to look at how we arrive at the expression for the first order correction to the energy in perturbation theory. So in perturbation theory, we have some system for which we cannot solve the Schrodinger equation exactly, and its Hamiltonian is defined as h here. And we express this Hamiltonian in terms of the reference Hamiltonian for a system which we can solve the Schrodinger equation exactly, plus a perturbation operator, which is everything else left in the Hamiltonian of the part we can't solve exactly. And we're going to have this parameter lambda here, which is really just going to be a bookkeeping parameter so that we can keep track of the different orders in perturbation theory that arise as we derive these corrections. So our wave function is going to be expressed in terms of a power series of lambda. So our wave function is going to be the wave function of the reference system plus the first order correction, lambda times psi 1, plus the second order correction, lambda squared times psi 2, etc. beyond that. Our energy is going to be the energy of the reference system, E0, plus the linear correction term, lambda times E1, plus the second order correction term, lambda squared times E2, etc. beyond that. So our Schrodinger equation for this system is just going to be h psi equals e psi, our total Hamiltonian. And we can substitute in the expressions we have here for h, psi, and e into our Schrodinger equation and get the following expressions that we have down below here. So now what we're going to do is break these down into the different orders in lambda in which the terms appear. So the first are going to be zero order, or terms that don't depend on lambda, if you think of it that way, lambda to the zero being one. We're just going to have h naught and psi naught, h naught, psi naught, n for the nth state, if there are, if some quantum number n, and a large number of states. Then on the other side, let's gather up all the terms that also depend on lambda to the zero, which is just going to be e naught times psi naught. So it's e zero n, ugh, n, psi naught n. Okay, then for any value of lambda that we pick, this equation has to be true. So this just gives us h naught psi naught equals e naught psi naught. This is just the Schrodinger equation for the reference system. So that means that our zeroth order energy is just going to be the energy of the reference system. And that makes sense because what we expect is that this perturbation is small and that our new system, which we can't solve exactly, is only a slight deviation away from this reference system. So it makes sense that the zero order energy is the energy of this reference system. So that's where our E0 comes from that we have up in here. Then beyond that, we'll start looking at the first order energy, terms that have one lambda in them. And that's going to be h naught times psi 1 h naught psi 1 n and psi naught and v, sorry, v times psi naught n. Then let's look at the terms that are linear and lambda on the other side. That's going to be e naught times psi 1 not n, psi 1 n. And there's going to be another term which is going to be e1 times psi naught. Okay, so if we divide both of these sides by lambda, then we'll just get h, h naught psi 1 plus v psi naught equals e naught psi 1 plus e1 psi naught. So what we want to get is this in terms of an expression for this e1, for this first order energy correction. Okay, so I'm going to write these going forward in the following way in terms of Dirac notation to keep it simple and easier to keep track of. That h, our, ket, our psi 1n is the ket n1 plus v, psi 0 is the ket n0 equals e naught n n1 plus e1 n times n0. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is left multiply by psi star naught n. So that's going to look like n0 h n1 
plus n0 v n0 equals n0 e0 n n1 plus n0 e1 n n0. Okay, what simplifications can we make from here? Well, these two on the right side here, these are just constants. We can pull constants out in front of those integrals there. So this is just going to give us e1 n n0 n0. And we know that this wave function, we're assuming that this wave function is normalized. So we're assuming that this n0 n0 or integral of n star n is just going to be 1. So this term is just going to become e1n. All right, that's nice and simple. This term here, we can pull out the e naught n, and we just get the integral of n star 0, n1. OK. And this term is a little bit of a caveat there. Um, because h is Hermitian, we can, and let me make clear that we're referring to h0 here on each of those cases. Because the Hamiltonian is Hermitian, we can say that this integral is going to be equal to the integral of n1 h0 n0. And then the second one we're just going to carry down. OK, so we're saying that because this is Hermitian, this, this has to be equal to the integral we have up there, and especially if we're assuming that it's real as well. So now we have h naught acting, acting on n0. And we know from our reference Hamiltonian that h naught acting on psi naught is just going to give us e naught psi naught. So when we move to the next page here, what we're going to have is n1 e0 n n0 for this first term here. And then we can drag that down. We know that that's going to be e0 n n1 n0. We can pull that out because that's a constant. Then dragging along everything else, n0 v n0 equals e naught n n0 n1 plus and because this became 1 we just have e1 n there. Okay what can we simplify now? What well, we have e naught n integral of n star 1 n0 and we have e naught n integral of n0 n0 star n1. Um, we know that these two integrals are going to be equal to each other because this is just this is just multiplication. These are going to be commutative, so these are going to simplify and and cancel out with each other. If we subtract e naught n, then this integral from each side, those two will cancel out. So then, what we're left with is our final expression for this first order energy. Let me write it in terms of this kind of more formal notation here with the parentheses. So our e1 is just going to equal this integral, which if I write out fully, it's going to be the integral over all of the wave function space, whatever volume element we have, d tau, psi 0 n star v psi 0 n. So this is what we said on the previous uh, video that the first order correction to the energy is just going to be this integral of the perturbation, the expectation value of the perturbation acting on the zeroth order wave function is going to be our first order correction. So this is uh, definitely the easiest one to derive. You could, get, you could continue this type of logic down here and derive the second, third, fourth, etc. correction beyond that. but we're mostly just going to be concerned about first order perturbation theory and maybe look a little bit into uh, 
what these first order energy corrections and wave function corrections look like.